Hi Forrester fans, I'm Peyton Tabor. I'm a junior here at the college and I'm doing the Coaches Show with Coach Cat, where we sit down every week and talk about last week's game and the upcoming one. This week we talk about last week's game against Ripon and preview the upcoming game against Grinnell. Here it is. Hi Coach, first off, congrats on another big road win and on being 6-0, that's awesome. Uh, thanks, it was a good, good trip for the guys up to Wisconsin and one we'll uh, build off of hopefully a lot. Yeah. First, I want to start off, so in the last two games, you guys are averaging 45 points a game, and in this past weekend against Ripon, you were extremely balanced both in the run game and the passing game. You had 201 yards rushing and 198 passing. Is this the offensive identity that you've been wanting all year? Yeah, I think the balance was definitely something we, after the Illinois College game, you know, we'd scored a lot of points, but we didn't really do much through the air, and I think that we had just become so dependent upon our run game that we wanted to really show that we had both sides of it. Um, I thought Trey did a good job of handling some of the things schematically that we gave to him that week. Um, you know, and the hard part is if we're just running the football, we're, we're not getting touched with some of our playmakers, whether it's, you know, A.J. Jackson or J.R. Henderson or whoever it is. You know, we've got to get those guys touches. And, and Robbie Mills had, you know, shows that he's a very reliable receiver, so we were able to get him a bunch of touches on Saturday. And, uh, you know, so for the second time this year, he's been our leading receiver. And for me, it was just we were really just handing the ball off, handing the ball off, and having success – but we have to work on the other parts of our identity, not just in practice, but also in games. And I thought that was a, a definite positive. Mm -hmm. um, against Ripon, you guys scored 21 points in the second quarter, which really opened the game up. What things led to that explosion in the second quarter? Yeah, so in the, in the first quarter, we, we kind of went through our openers. And, and some of the stuff that we were expecting, they were defending a little bit differently. Um, and then so we made a couple of formational adjustments. And once we made those adjustments, we got what we wanted. Um, and we were able to just run the football, to be honest with you. And our defense was, was playing awesome in terms of giving us great field possession. And so the offense was able to um, run the football. And, and we ran you know, a couple of plays repetitively. And I think that sometimes when you do that as a coach, you feel like, okay, should I call something else? They're going to stop it this time. And our guys were doing such a great job executing that we were able to stick to the same call um, three or four times in a row. And, and it just kept working. And so our, our running backs with Armani and Damon, um, we're just doing a really good job following their blocks and uh, you know the, the offensive line and tight ends that we have we were in 12 personnel a lot of that that time so having two tight ends on the field is not something that a lot of people do um, and we were really able to use that to our advantage mm -hmm. now on the flip side on defense your guys only gave up 129 yards of total offense and helped win the turnover battle with two picks on the day and they recovered a fumble Besides Dante Esposito, who was named Midwest Conference Performer of the Week on defense, who else shined on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, Matt Kozial really popped on the tape when you watched it. He was out there um, hitting people in the run game and feeling really well. Um, our defensive line the last three weeks has just been playing at, a, at an all-time high level collectively. And so sometimes it's really hard to isolate that one guy. Um, but Jacob Fitch had three tackles for a loss in the game, which is, I think, a career high for him. And he was just really physical um, throughout the whole game, kind of pushing the pocket. And then Alex Bendler had another really good week and you know, disrupting the pass game, got a nice sack deep in their, their territory and had a couple of plays where the quarterback took off the scramble and he got him before he got the line of scrimmage. And I think that collectively that unit is playing at a super high level. Um, and yeah, Dante's two picks in the game really, really helped too. Now on special teams, AJ Jackson averaged 23 and a half yards per return and his long was 35. AJ continues to kind of be a bright spot on both on offense and special teams. Are the teams that you face beginning to kind of try to take him away? Yeah, they're definitely not kicking punts to him. And one of the things where we've all, in some ways we've taken AJ away because our defense is playing so well, we're not seeing kickoffs. And so the, on Saturday, Rippin only kicked off twice. One of them was an onside kick attempt, surprise onside kick attempt, so that's not going anywhere near AJ. Um, but on the punts, you know, he averaged that. He actually had 35 more yards on the one, but they, uh, quote, saw him step out of bounds. So uh, he, he crossed the end zone before the whistle blew, but the, they called him out of bounds. So I think that, you know, the punt team is, is the one where AJ is going to continue to get touches and opportunities because they either have to make the decision to kick out of bounds like they did on Saturday a couple of times, or they have to risk the field position. If you're not willing to kick to them, um, you know, you're going to give up 15 extra yards, 20 extra yards, and that can be a big difference in the in the game. And, you know, as opposed to maybe you force them into a fair catch, your team does a good job in coverage. But, yeah, I don't think anybody wants to kick to AJ. And I certainly would – I'd find options as I, if I was going against Lake Forest to do otherwise. Mm 
Now I kind of want to shift gears and talk about the upcoming game against Grinnell. Mm -hmm. So they're 2-3 and three in the conference and have lost the past couple of games. But have you noticed anything that's going to pose a threat to your guys? Yeah, I mean, offensively, they've got three really talented players that stand out every single week on film. Um, Danny Carter, who's their tailback, is an extremely hard runner. He's got kind of a unique running style, but it's extremely effective, extremely physical. Um, and then Dustin Saia is one of their wide receivers. He's been there for four years, so he's those two guys have been a part of that program as it kind of went through its lowest point and are now kind of rebuilding back up and, and getting it going. So I think that their commitment to helping that team succeed is something we have to watch. Their talent is, it speaks for itself. Um, and then their quarterback, um, you know, the, the best comparison I can give is he's got a little bit of Johnny Manziel in him, what you saw when he was at Texas A&M, not the pro stuff. Um, and, and so where he's just kind of running around and creating havoc and, you know, hitting some spin moves and then finding the guy downfield, and you're like, how did he do that? Like, there's there's probably five or six clips on film when, when you look at it, you're like, there's no way that should have happened, and yet that young man made it happen. Um, so I think those three guys on offense have absolutely stood out, and, and Saeed is leading the conference in receiving yards, and um, Danny Carter's doing a great job running the football. So they, they do have some potency on offense that we have to really be geeked up and ready for. Speaking of their offense, their time of possession has been about 37 minutes per game, but they're only averaging about 21 points a game. Is this a team that's going to try to shorten the game and keep our offense off the field? Absolutely. They're trying to create as few possessions in the game as possible. I think it's a really smart move by their coaching staff. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the depth on their team. You know, it, it wasn't so long ago in 2019 where they had to cancel their season after our game. And I think that over the last two years, they've been able to build up that roster through recruitment, um, have gotten into a, you know, the lower 50s, mid 50s for their roster. And I think they just know that unfortunately they don't have the depth um, to, to play those long, drawn out 80, 90 play games. And so that if they can shrink the, you know, game possessions down, similar to how Knox did to us a couple weeks ago. Um, I think that's kind of their goal is to is to win that time of possession because if they're on the field offensively, it's preventing us from scoring and it helps their defense get a rest before they have to go back out. Mm -hmm. So what are the keys to victory for us going into this game? We've got to be efficient on defense. We can't let drives, we can't give up the freebies on first downs. Um, we have to make them earn everything, which is a coach speak, I get that. But we, we have to make sure that those three and outs stay three and outs and they don't become well, now it's six plays. Now it's eight plays because we gave up a first down, and they're now clicking that time off the clock. And, and on offense, um, there are some things I think we feel really good about going into this week that are going to be successful for us. Then we just have to execute. And, you know, one of the things is, you know, last week was a big game, you know, two undefeated teams playing against each other, and our guys were locked in. It, it was one of the most sh intense, sharp games that we've had, um, mentally focused, physically prepared. They can't take a step back this week just because we're playing a team that has a lower record. Um, this is still a team that's won games in the conference this year. Uh, we can't look at them as the Grinnell team of 2019, the last time we played them. Um, if we can you know, hide ourselves against that and, and be prideful in looking at what we're doing and doing it to our level, I think that's where we can have great success winning the game. Yeah. Well, that's actually all I have for you today, Coach. So that wraps up our show. But best of luck against Grinnell, and I look forward to chatting with you next week after another Forster victory. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Go Forsters.